Tyruco, natalizumab, a Tysabri biosimilar, has been FDA approved, but is that as good as the original? Just as safe, as effective? What about immunogenicity? I'll answer these questions definitively based on this head-to-head -head randomized trial. But I'll start with a little background. What is the difference between a generic drug and a biosimilar drug anyway? What does it mean to say Tyruco is biosimilar to Tysabri? Well, a generic drug refers to a simple small molecule that can be replicated exactly. For instance, if I make a generic aspirin drug, all I have to do to prove it's just as good as any other aspirin is give people the drug and check their blood and see if I have the same same concentration of the compound, if it has the same bioavailability, that means it's going to be just as effective and safe. But for these drugs, these large, complicated biological molecules that come from cells, it's a little bit different. And so the manufacturing of Tysabri and Tyruco is a little bit different. Tysabri comes from rat cell lines. Both use recombinant DNA technology to make cells produce these antibodies or immunoglobins, which then bind to their target. And it turns out Tyruco uses hamster ovary cells. And it's a complicated process with some proprietary techniques involved. And so the FDA is essentially saying, we want you to prove that Tyruco really is as good as Tysabri in actual humans with MS. So Tysabri, the parent drug, was FDA approved for MS in 2004. It was briefly taken off the market in 2005 due to two reports of a feared side effect, PML, or progressive multifocal leukoencephalopathy, a rare brain infection caused by the JC virus, and then was placed back on the market in 2006 with a monitoring program called TOUCH, and it's going to be the same thing for Tyruco. Both of these drugs are also proof for Crohn's disease and Crohn's disease, Tysabri is approved for this condition in 2009. So Tysabri is marketed by Biogen, Tyruco is marketed by the Novartis subsidiary Sandoz, and the dose is exactly the same as Tysabri, 300 milligrams intravenously given once every four weeks. It takes about an hour, though many people give the drug every six weeks or even eight weeks, which appears to reduce the risk of getting PML. This drug is approved for relapse lapsing forms of multiple sclerosis, clinically isolated syndrome, and also active secondary progressive disease, the exact same as Tysabri. I'll point out that Tysabri did not actually meet the primary endpoint in the ASCEND trial for secondary progressive MS, but it showed some signs of benefit. And so Tyruco should be the same. And this next slide shows the mechanism of action of Tyruco, which is to block the lymphocytes, a subclass of white blood cells, the B and T cells, from getting into the central nervous system. So it doesn't kill white blood cells, it just sequesters them outside of the brain's spinal cord and optic nerve, or if you're treating Crohn's disease, outside of the gastrointestinal tract. This is the normal process by which lymphocytes get into the brain. They have these surface proteins called alpha-4 integrins, which then bind to surface proteins of endothelial cells in the blood-brain barrier, such as VCAM1, and then the cell sticks, and then diapodesis through the blood-brain barrier into the central nervous system. Tyruco is an antibody, and of course Tyruco and Tysabri are both natalizumab. They both have the exact same sequence of amino acids and work in exactly the same way. They bind alpha-4 integrins interrupting this process and keeping the lymphocytes out of the brain. And of course, that is the reason that even though these drugs are not general immunosuppressants, they prevent the immune system from properly surveilling the central nervous system, hence the risk of JC virus brain infection or PML. And this is the antelope trial, the head-to-head -head randomized trial comparing Tysabri, the old drug, with Tyruco, the new drug. They had 264 participants, all with relapsing remitting MS. It was a 44-week trial, so a little less than a year, and they did something interesting where 30 people who were originally randomized to get Tysabri 
crossed over at week 24 to get Ty Ruko. So they wanted to see if you're on Ty Sabri, can you safely transition to Ty Ruko? The age range was 18 to 60, and you had to have an EDSS or expanded disability status score, a measure of disability in MS research of zero to five, meaning you had to be able to walk 200 meters at least without a cane. And the study took place in seven countries and 48 different centers. And now we move to the results, and we'll start with the number of new MRI lesions. This graph is cumulative new MRI lesions with Tyruco. They refer to it as biosimilar natalizumab, and they refer to Tysabri as reference or the original natalizumab in light red. Tyruco is the darker red. And you can see there were slightly fewer new lesions with Tyruco, no statistically significant difference, of course, about the same. There's this therapeutic lag effect where by eight weeks, some people do have new lesions, but then it really flattens out. That that's because this drug takes a little time to work. It doesn't do anything about lymphocytes that are already in the nervous system. But once you're on the drug, people tend to be very stable in terms of not developing new MRI lesions. These are the clinical outcomes, relapses, and disability progression. And I'll tell you right off the bat, there are no statistically significant differences. They looked at annualized relapse rate, relapses per person per year. It was 0.13 with Tysabri versus 0.17, a tiny bit more with Tyruco, but about the same. And these people were doing well. That's about one relapse per seven years on average. For people who switched from Tysabri to Tyruco, the annualized relapse rate was about the same 0.15. In terms of changes of disability, the mean change from baseline in the EDSS was minus 0.14 with Tyruco. So they got a tiny bit better and minus 0.05 with Ty Sabri. Now you may say, hey, people taking Tyruco had three times more improvement than people taking Ty Sabri, but this 0.09 difference is really minuscule, not clinically or statistically significant. And the people who changed from Ty Sabri to Tyruco, the change was minus 0.03. Again, no differences in clinical outcomes. This is the data on side effects, biosimilar natalizumab or Tyruco on the left reference natalizumab or Tysabri on the right, the people who switched in the middle. If you look at overall side effects, in these clinical trials, they encourage people to report everything. It's about the same. So treatment emergent adverse events, 64.9% with Tyruco, a tiny bit more, 68.9% with Tysabri. But a lot of these things are very minor or not related to the drug. So let's look at more severe events, grade three treatment emergent adverse events. There were four people taking taking Tyruco and only one person getting Tysabri. So a little bit more with Tyruco. Let's take a look at these events. So these are the four grade three adverse events with Tyruco. One was increased alanine aminotransferase. This is a liver function blood test, but this kind of thing can happen with Tysabri too. Increased blood triglycerides. This may not be drug related. Nasal septum deviation, probably not drug related. And urticaria or hives, that can certainly occur with Tysabri too. With Tysabri, there was one grade three adverse events, which was pain in the extremity. I'm not sure why that's grade three or if it was even related to the drug. So nothing really sticks out here. There were no reported cases of PML and no differences in the change in JC virus antibody index levels. This is used to measure the risk of getting PML. There were slightly more drug discontinuations in people who had adverse events with Tyruco. Eight people getting Tyruco or 6.1% versus three people or 2.9% getting Tysabri. One person who switched drugs later discontinued. But these are very small numbers. This is a low discontinuation rate, probably nothing to worry about. They also looked at anti-drug antibodies and neutralizing antibodies. These can be important because they may reduce the efficacy of the medicine. A lot of people test positive. 87% tested positive for anti-drug antibodies with Tyruco, but 91%, a little bit more, 
with Ty Sabri. And in fact, not a single person Sero converted out of the 30 people who changed from Ty Sabri to Ty Ruko. So there's no indication that changing drugs is associated with increased anti-natalizumab antibodies. There doesn't seem to be a problem at all if you switch from Ty Sabri to Ty Ruko. There are some slight differences in the inactive ingredients between Ty Ruko on the top and Ty Sabri on the bottom. I highlighted the differences in red, but these substances are generally well tolerated and unlikely to cause allergies. And so the authors conclude there were no significant differences between treatment groups between Tysabri and Tyruco observed across secondary efficacy endpoints, safety, tolerability, or immunogenicity assessments, and I agree, these two drugs are the same. However, the antelope trial was a relatively small number of people, and so to understand the side effects of Tyruco, we have to borrow from our experience with Tysabri, and if you look at the product label of Tyruco, it contains all the same side effects of Tysabri, even if they haven't occurred yet. Of course, the most feared side effect is PML, progressive multifocal leukoencephalopathy, the serious brain infection caused by the JC virus. The JC virus is everywhere. We can all be infected, but in rare cases of people taking these types of drugs, it can become activated and infect the brain. On the right is an MRI showing findings typical of PML. It can be very serious, even fatal. The main way to avoid it is to try not to take it if you are at higher risk, if you are JC virus antibody positive positive, particularly if you have a high index level, and there are other factors that influence the risk of PML. This drug can also cause allergies. Around 6% have some sort of allergy. Even if the allergy is mild, like a few hives, it can be quite serious because it can make the drug less effective. In other words, your immune system attacks the drug, and then your drug is sort of taken up and is unable to bind the lymphocytes, keeping them out of the central nervous system. So that may be a reason to stop the drug, even even if the allergy is mild. Many people getting the infusion can have headaches, though they're usually mild. And perhaps the most important side effect is rebound disease activity. This drug doesn't kill immune cells, it simply sequesters them out. And so if you stop the drug, later on you can have a rebound relapse, often around four to six months later, and sometimes it can be very, very severe. This can happen for many reasons. Maybe people lose insurance coverage, they move, they have an unplanned pregnancy, Pregnancy, maybe they feel well and just want to stop taking it. It's generally not advised unless there's a very specific reason. Doctors in the past used to advise a washout period if people are going to change from Tysabri or now Tyruco to another drug. That's generally not recommended. It's usually better to start the new drug immediately afterwards. This shows the risk of getting the most feared side effect, PML, based on the JC virus antibody results. So for people who test negative, the risk is very low, estimated to be less than 1 in 10,000. For people who test positive, the risk is higher. And people who test positive and have a history of prior immunosuppressant use, maybe they got Ocrevus or Rituximab or Cladribine in the past, the risk may be even higher. And you can see the approximate risk with and without immunosuppressant use, and the risk seems to go up over time. A more accurate representation of risk is shown in this chart with data including the JC virus antibody index. And so the way the JC virus antibody test works is that if the index is less than 0.2, they call it negative. If it's between 0.2 and 0.4, they do another test called inhibition to determine if it's negative or positive. And if it's above 0.4, they call it positive. But it turns out that greater levels of JC virus antibody positivity do matter, at least in people who have not received prior immunosuppressants. So this chart looks at the risk of PML per 1,000 people getting Tysabri who have not received prior immunosuppressants who do test positive for the JC virus antibody, but with various levels of the index, less than 0 0.6, 0 0.6 to 1.0, 1 to 1 1.7, and greater than 1.7. You can see if the index is low, less than 0 0.6, even after six years, the risk is only 0.3 per 1,000. In other words, roughly 1 in 3,300, pretty low. But for people who have a greater than 1.7 index who take it for six years, the risk could be around 30 
per 1,000, which is, of course, around a 1 in 35 risk. Very high when we're talking about this very severe infection. There are other rare side effects with Tysabri. For instance, because the drug works by sequestering lymphocytes outside of the nervous system, other rare infections have been reported, such as encephalitis caused by herpes or varicella viruses. Same thing with the retina, acute retinal necrosis due to these same viruses. Liver toxicity can occur, usually mild, but in some cases, severe fulminant liver failure has been reported. There are also some instances of low platelets and bleeding that results from it. The good news is the rate of systemic infections does not seem to be significantly increased. This is data from one of the Tysabri studies looking at Tysabri on the left versus placebo on the right. And you can see the risk of various types of infections, urinary tract infections, respiratory tract infections. It's about the same because again, these drugs don't kill your immune system they simply keep them out of the central nervous system. I'll end with a few miscellaneous topics. One is your doctor can't simply prescribe Tyruco, just like with Tysabri, which has the touch program. You're going to have to fill out a little paperwork, and that's because of the risk of PML. And of course, that's how we have all these statistics on the risk of PML. So it's a little bit difficult to get the drug, perhaps. And your physician is going to have to have some experience with it. Even though Tysabri and Tyruco are not considered traditional immunosuppressors, it's generally advised not to get live vaccines, vaccines with living components, such as the old shingles vaccine, just in case. And I'd be interested to know what you think. Are you convinced by me that Tyruco is just as good as Tysabri? Would you feel comfortable taking it? And what do you think about biosimilar drugs in general? Do you think that regulation should be very strict and people should have to do very good studies like this to really prove their drug is equivalent? Or would you be in favor of a little bit looser regulation maybe allowing people to just do a small amount of clinical testing on a limited number of individuals with the disease to allow more competitors to come into the market and maybe make prices a little bit lower and health insurance more affordable. I'd be interested to know your thoughts and let me know if you have any suggestions for future videos.